is up my togs. So we were fortunate enough to have a question submitted by a subscriber. And it was a very thoughtful question, someone who has concern for their loved one who is a writer, but not necessarily a writer when it comes to writing in, in, a, in urban environments. And when I say urban environments, I mean close, close to or within the area of a, of a large city. And I totally understand that. For the longest time, I didn't actually ride like I'm riding right now on the highway. If I was gonna make my way to a place like Sacramento, which I'm not sure if on the camera you can pick up in the distance, but I can see it from here. That's where we're, we're headed nearby there. But I, if I was gonna go to Sacramento, I would take the back roads. And, you know, my wife was definitely more comfortable with me doing that. And as a, as a new rider, I was definitely more comfortable doing that as well. But here I, am, here I am on the highway and I wanted to share with my subscriber who had a very thoughtful question which I will roll right here. Gene Clark writes, My daughter lives in Sacramento and won't ride in the city, but she'll drive to Boise, rent a bike, and ride all over Idaho and Montana. Her opinion is city motorcycle riding is just too stressful, but she does ride an e-bike since there are many bike lanes and paths throughout the city. How do you feel about riding in Woodland versus in Sacramento or San Francisco or LA? Do you adjust your riding style or strategy when you're city riding? So what are the different riding habits or uh, strategies that we use when riding in a different environment as opposed to riding within like the Woodland city limits, which is like a small city. Uh, I wouldn't call it a town, but we're, we're a population of about 60,000. And you know, when we ride within the Woodland city limits, mostly uh, the top speed is going to be like 45 miles an hour. There's no one, nowhere in town that goes above that. Uh, unless you're going up around the back roads, and I wouldn't call that within the, the city limits per se. So anyway, we're out here on the highway, and one of the things that uh, that is more important, I think, and when I say more important, these are things that you should do all the time. No matter where you are or what situation you're riding, you should be doing these all the time. But there's there's a there's a few rules that I strictly adhere to when I'm riding. Uh, in high-speed situations and one of them is the 10 second rule and I made a whole video on this But what you want to do is you want to be scanning at least 10 seconds ahead and on a freeway That can be hard because you know within 10 seconds. I'm, I'm traveling a pretty great distance But the biggest thing is just scanning and being aware of what's ahead of you Not so much what's behind you because if you pre get preoccupied with what's behind you in your rear view mirrors uh, you can miss what's going on at, uh, on up ahead and that's where the danger lies for the most part so make sure you're scanning uh, 10 seconds is the, the rule but on the highway you know that that's that's a long way you can go in 10 seconds so just be constantly scanning the other thing is is, is keep your distance you know in a car you, I think it's a three second rule. You want to be able to count to three before you can reach the point of the next car in front of you. That rule might have changed since I was a, a young lad in driver's training, but that was definitely the rule for us was three seconds. And on the motorcycle, it, it's no different. I would probably even give yourself a wider berth. And especially when you get within city limits and the density of traffic gets higher and higher, you just have to always be, be, be mindful. So uh, we're on two lanes right now and we're eventually going to be moving into three lanes, but one of the biggest things that I will stress when making uh, trips on a highway is know your route. Uh, and what I mean is, you know, a lot of us have GPS on our phones, we have Bluetooth connected to our, our, our headsets and we can hear uh, our navigation, but devices fail, batteries run out you know, device get overheated and turn off. So even though you might have all those navigation things plugged in, still have a, a good idea of where you're going and what you need to do. And plan it out. If you're gonna take an alternate route, make sure you leave yourself time to take an exit. The, the last thing you wanna do is cut across more than one lane of traffic. Uh, every time you do that, you're putting yourself in jeopardy and you just want to make sure that you're you're going one lane at a time checking your blind spot every single time these are just common practices that you want to you want to implement into your riding every single time you hop on your bike but again when you're on a 
on a multi-lane or on a highway you just not you cannot be too careful so right now we're, i'm kind of uh, able to display one of my other rules and that is don't stay in someone's blind spot for too long and don't wall yourself in what i mean by that is if i were to stay right here in between this truck and the meat and the uh the shoulder here on the left uh, i'm not leaving myself an out so if something were to happen in front of me i'm trapped i can only go one place and that's forward you want to make sure that you've got a place to go uh, right now if i was if something were to happen in front of me I, i've got the shoulder here which is pretty wide and then i've got this lane uh, and there's cars coming here which you got to be aware of but yeah you just got to always leave yourself an out you don't ever want to be walled in uh, it, it, it's even more important when you get into uh, like the inner city where the, the, the lanes are even more congested and all you have is a wall on your left side the last thing you want to do is get trapped between a big truck and that wall where you are absolutely boxed in there's not a whole lot more to riding on on the on a busy freeway close to a big city as there is riding in town you're gonna use all the same principles but you just have to I understand that because of the speed that you're traveling at things are going to happen so much faster your reactions are going to be have to be quicker and the the things like counter steering uh, become so important if you've got to counter steer quickly uh, I've seen uh, too many horror videos where a, a bike is going to head on into danger and instead of counter steering their way out and leaning and getting out of the way of the obstacle they they try to steer like their handlebars like they would a steering wheel uh, what you'll see people do is if i wanted to go to my right here you'll see people freak out and twist their handlebars to the right because you know that's where your driving instincts or maybe something uh, just kind of like reflexes pop in and you're like I want to go to the right so you jab your your handlebars to the right and what it does is just stand you up it stands you right up so anyway those are my tips for you uh, I hope those were helpful I hope those were helpful maybe for your daughter who uh, who doesn't enjoy or doesn't like to ride uh, within the bigger city limits if you have any other questions make sure you leave them in the comments if I can't answer them I'm sure that there's uh, other experienced riders out there who will be happy to to come to your rescue and answer your question as well and guys that's all i've got for you today if you like this video make sure you hit that thumbs up down there which is the like button and if you haven't already make sure you smash that subscribe button guys if you're out there riding be safe and if you're not riding get ready i'm that one guy and i am out